Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Yin, with your host Mr. Yin. And today we're going to be talking about geospatial data science with Python. So if this is the first time you're watching this video, how it works is this is a collaboration project with Pat Publisher. And they sent me a book, I reviewed the book and give an honest feedback on camera. In addition to the book, there isn't really any other monitoring incentive for this video. So hopefully it's an honest feedback that I have a little bit of personal experience as well as the review of the book. So with that being said, let's get started. The name of the author for this book is David Jordan. David is just truly a legendary character, right? You know, he's been pretty much all over the places. He's currently an executive director at JP Morgan, specializing in geospatial data. In addition, he has been leading so many different teams across different sectors of the field and have been developing patterns that goes into geospatial data platforms. And then before that, he was at Fifth Third Bank working on a geospatial data set that lead to a $4.7 billion acquisition. All these are great things to look for on the profile of an author. And, you know, me personally, since I'm not an expert in geospatial science, right? When I see a profile like this, absolutely sold, right? Please sign me up. I want to read about this book. I want to know what's going on. So, David, if you're watching this video, it's truly an honor to do this review for you. And specifically, I just want to say that I'm grateful for uh, people such as yourself to put all these knowledge down on paper, uh, as well as computer code, for that matter, to share with the audience. So definitely a big shout out to the author. Truly appreciate this opportunity. So now with that being said, let's talk about the actual content of the book. So this book actually starts by laying the ground of what are the definitions, what are the roadblocks in geospatial data science. Like, for instance, what is the data, right? And that's what the first chapter is talking about. It's building up the groundwork. What is geospatial data? What is the definition of a data science? And how can these two things come together to become one? So for someone like me, that makes my life easier, right? Because I don't know anything about geospatial data science. But I do know Python. I have handled data before, and I know a little bit about vectorization, matrix, coordinates, and so on and so forth. So before I go out there and start building all these fancy models, I need someone to tell me, hey, look, if you want to understand geospatial data, you have to have coordinates and their values on these coordinates, vectors, matrix, so on and so forth. Great. That gets me started. That basically tells me what the shape and the dimension of the data set is that we're using. And then the author didn't just stop there, right? Like, why stop there? Why not go further? And that's exactly true. In chapter two, the book tells you where to find them, which is super amazing. It kind of reminds me of the first time I'm reading Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. It kind of gives you a little bit of that feeling of, hey, you know, you got this entire the field of magical world open up to you and this is the channel to look for them so there's static geospatial data so there's also dynamic geospatial data and then let's talk about the geospatial file formats right what is global positional system or also known as gps and how do you encode that process of a certain dot that is moving in time and space that's interesting, right? And you need certain sets of keys to open those doors. And chapter two does that job for you. And then eventually he moved on to above and beyond and talk about shape file, GeoJSON files. And if you want to be even fancy about it, LIDAR files, right? All these file formats can be included in geospatial data science. And in chapter two, and as well as later chapters, uh, the author used Manhattan as an example. And me personally, that really rings a bell for me because when I was a grad school student, I did a project on Vision Zero, which is one of the most interesting projects I've seen. And essentially, we are looking at the geospatial data of how traffic move around New York City. And if any of those information can be a potentially a cause to trigger the fatality 
on the street uh, whenever there's a traffic accident happen. So uh, the data set that we're looking at back then is essentially a geospatial data set, which that makes my life easier when I was reading this chapter because this chapter kind of also focused on the shape file, which is really a geometry of point and line. They somehow work together to form polygon. And that is kind of like the base knowledge that you need uh, to work around a shape file and to understand how to represent information out there in a geospatial data sense. So after you have access to the data and you can open it up, you can work around the file formats and so on and so forth, you want to explore, right? Your usual good old school exploratory data analysis, of course, it applies here. So as a data scientist, it's your job to understand what the data is talking about and specifically uh, what is it that we're even looking at, right? Let's take population, for instance. A simple geospatial data set could be focusing on the different level of population. Let's say, for instance, China has a larger population, and then perhaps you can plot the map using geospatial data set, the coordinates of longitude, latitude, so on and so forth. And at the per pair of longitude and latitude, you can plot the population with respect to a different color. And then you can kind of color code it in a spectrum, uh, saying that one end of the spectrum and that color indicates a higher population and then vice versa. That kind of gives you an understanding that's very visual and say, hey, look, you plot a graph, you say, hey, uh, the color for China is this particular color and it's like that end of the spectrum, boom, there you go. You know the population of that country is higher. So something like that is very basic, right? And the fortunate thing about this book is it lays out all that code for you. There's complimentary GitHub repo along with the book, as well as in the chapters, there's code walkthrough, code reviews, specifically exploring the geospatial data. Me personally, I particularly enjoy the GeoPandas package in chapter four and five, uh, when it's trying to explore the geospatial data from the Pandas library structure. So then from there, you form a very clear idea, you form a very clear path, right? So part one, part two, you have your data, you know how to access it, and you can work around the file shape. And then after that, you can do some exploratory data analysis, you can plot the plot, right? And then you can access the data to know what the data is talking about. Now, from there, it's like, where do we go, right? Well, you can look at the plot and you can form hypothesis. I think in data science, this chapter, particularly chapter nine, hypothesis is what we lack of, right? Most likely people wait for uh, the stakeholders to tell you what to do, and then the data scientists go out there and just do it. Because in industry, you're kind of tuned to think in a different way. And oftentimes the stakeholders who are giving you that direction may or may not have thought about the direction using data. So the hypothesis formed by the stakeholder is based on experience, not necessarily straight from the data. And of course, there are discrepancies, right? So oftentimes, we as a data scientists had to go in there to resolve these discrepancies. That would be like, hey, you know, this is what you want to go, but this is where data is going. Mm, they don't go the same way, right? So particularly in this chapter, what I really appreciate is the author talk about that experience and how you can form hypothesis using data and before uh, perhaps you even build a model and you can let the hypothesis guide you what kind of model you want to build instead of just randomly throw a model at a data set and then just kind of be like hey fingers crossed you know let's see how well this model can do so talking about hypothesis you are essentially trying to answer if one thing is related to the other right or a more general word can be associated, right? If one thing is associated with another thing, right? In statistics, there's correlation, right? This Pearson's correlation is there. You can use any software package to give you that correlation uh, if you're just feeding two vectors. In geospatial data, unfortunately, it takes a step further, right? You need to work out the geospatial correlation or the geospatial autocorrelation. Now, that's when things get interesting because you're not just looking at two vectors, you're also looking at the coordinates, right? Longitude, latitude, as well as whatever it is that's higher dimension, population or GDP, 
something like that. And that's when the authors start to talk about Moran's I statistic. It is a uh, autocorrelation statistics for spatial data. So things get a little bit technical, a little bit mathematical, which I enjoy, to be honest, because sometimes it's interesting to see a, a complicated formula within a chapter, right? So I thought I enjoyed that chapter, which is the formal hypothesis. And then you can use those statistics and your knowledge about what the hypothesis is and where that's coming from to use as a guideline for you to build that machine learning model. Then from there, everything follows, right? Chapter 9, Chapter 10, Chapter 11, they all talk about how do you build the model. You can do a spatial regression model. You can even go with newer networks, right? Who knows? Uh, lots of things can happen from there when you want to build a model. But they all come after, right? The first step is to understand what the data set is talking about. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. And it's highly recommended for you to learn about this book. If you are a fan of geospatial data or not, that doesn't matter. I still highly recommend you to read about this book. It really blew my mind. And it gives me a whole new perspective of how to interpret the present day world that we all live in right now. So with that being said, give a like if you like the video and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode.